Today, I will start with the last topic in this course. This last topic I'm gonna solve or I'm gonna teach you how to solve indeterminate structure. Just a reminder, by the beginning of this course, I give you these categories. For any structure, your structure can be stable or unstable. If your structure is stable, it can be determinate or indeterminate. Do you remember that? Based on how many or what is the relationship between number of equation and the number of unknowns. For example, if you have beam looks like this. Or beam looks like this. The first beam, we have two reaction at this hinge and one reaction at this roller. So how many reactions do you have? Three unknowns. How many equations, equilibrium equation do you have? We have three equilibrium equations. So number of unknowns equal number of equation, your structure is stable and determined. For the second one, we have two reactions here. One reaction at this roller, one reaction at this roller. So how many reactions do you have? We have four reaction. We have three equations. So number of unknowns greater than number of equation, your structure is stable and indeterminate. My question is, do you think, so this one is determinate? And this one is indeterminate. Indeterminate means number of unknowns greater than number of equations. Mathematically, mathematically, if the number of unknowns greater than number of equations, we can not solve for these unknowns. That makes sense? Mathematically. If you the number of unknowns greater than the available number of equations, we cannot solve for these unknowns. So your structure is indeterminate. We cannot solve. If you cannot solve for unknowns, if you cannot solve for reactions, I cannot solve for anything. If you go back to uh, the, uh, the whole course, starting from the beginning until exam number three, the first step, in any problem, we need to solve for the action. That's right. For uh, beams, frames, truss, influence line, deflection, we need to figure out the reactions. If you cannot, your structure is indeterminate. Today, we will learn how to solve indeterminate structure because number of unknowns greater than number of equations so we cannot solve for reactions we need to learn a new method help us to solve these problems we have many uh, methods consistent deformation method slope deflection method and moment distribution method. I will cover only the third method, moment distribution method. If you would like to learn more about the first method and the second method, I have recorded videos for these two methods. You can watch if you would like to get more extra uh, information. But uh, we have three methods. All of them will do the same solving and determined structure but i will focus only on the third method moment distribution method but i have question and i need some of you to tell me 
Do you think we prefer our structure to be determined or to be indeterminate? If you are looking to a bridge, any bridge around your area, highway bridge, do you like to make this bridge determinate or indeterminate? Your house is determinate or indeterminate? My question is, do you like your structure to be determinate or indeterminate? What do you think? Any answer? Anybody tell me something? Uh, do you like indeterminate structure or we like determinate structure? What do you think as engineer? Okay, you like determinate because it's easy to solve. You can solve it with what you learn it. But I'm talking about in the in the real life. Do you like so Zach said indeterminate structure? Why? The student said determinate. Why? The student said indeterminate. Why? What do you think? So you are right now building a new structure. Do you like to make it determinate or do you like to make it indeterminate? Okay, it's a good point. Uh, guys, if you look to a bridge, any highway bridge, If you go to Dallas and watch uh, any bridge, you will find something like this. This beam is separated from this beam, is separated from this beam, is separated from this beam. I believe if you go to Dallas right now or any city, and watch any highway bridge, you will find this. Each beam is disconnected from the next beam. Did you see this before? We, you will not see the bridge looks like one beam supported by columns. You will never see this. You will see a uh, simply supported beams supported by the column at this connection and this connection and this connection and so on did you see this okay if you didn't okay go back and watch any highway bridge by the way if we did this construction for bridge you are making this bridge to be determined in this case the bridge is determined structure if you do the beam one unit and connect it to the columns you are making the bridge is indeterminate you will never see this Does that make sense however if you are watching your house right now if you are and you are looking for a beam floor beam in your house you will see the beam looks like one unit supported by column one unit it's one unit so it's indeterminate beam 
indeterminate beam. Wow. So why the beam in the bridge is made as determinate and why this beam in my house is made indeterminate? What is the reason for that? So we need to understand what is the advantage to be indeterminate? And what is the disadvantage for any structure to be indeterminate? We need to make a comparison between determinate and indeterminate as advantage and disadvantage. Anything in this life has advantage and disadvantage. Does that make sense? That makes sense? So let's start with the advantage. If you are making your bridge by two beams disconnected like this, your structure is determinate. If you make your beam as one unit like your house, it's indeterminate. Bending moment diagram, bending moment. Your bending moment on this beam will be this maximum value, WL squared divide it. If the beam is continuous, one unit, your bending moment diagram, the maximum value will be WL squared divide 21.4. My question is, which value is bigger? WL squared divide it or WL squared divide 21.4, which value is bigger? Any answer? I think WL squared, WL squared, the denominator is the same. What about the denominator? This one is 8, this one is 21.4. I think this value is smaller. So, so smaller moment means smaller stress means less expensive or less cost so the advantage of using indeterminate structure we are making less stresses and the less cost the cost of the structure will be less. The stresses on the structure will be less. So we prefer to build indeterminate structure. Your house is indeterminate structure to cause less stresses and less cost. Do you know why? Because the bending moment on the indeterminate structure is less than determined structure. Any question? That makes sense? So we have advantage of indeterminate structure. We prefer indeterminate structure for less deflection, I'm sorry, less stresses and less cost because the bending moment diagram will be smaller. Okay. Greater stiffness. My question is, if you have your beam, this one, this part is one unit, and this part is another unit. However, the beam is, the whole beam is one unit. Which one will give you deflection more? By calculation, this little beam will give you deflection here deflection i'm talking about deflection deformation equal 5 wl to power 4 divide 384 ei however if the beam is one unit the whole beam is one unit the deflection here will be smaller will be smaller how much 2.1 WL to power 4 divide 384 EI. So this one, the dominator is the same. The dominator is the same. 
However, the denominator here is 2.1, the denominator, the denominator here is 5. So which deflection is smaller? This one. So we prefer the beam in your house to be indeterminate. Why? Less deflection. So for example, if you are walking on the second floor, the floor will deflect smaller. Uh, as you know, a uh, uh, part of our problems in your apartment, in on our apartment, the uh, noise caused by the neighbor upstairs. If they are walking, you are hearing, you are watching the deflection of the floor. That's right. So if you are making your structure or your floor indeterminate, one unit like this, uh, the deflection will be smaller. So we have advantage of indeterminate structure. So it looks like indeterminate is good. Less stress, less cost, less deflection. So why we are need to make our structure to be determined? Okay, wait. What else? What else? Uh, I have question. I have question. Uh, um, if you have your bridge, which is determinate, and we have beer, beer, and beer, for some reason, you have a car accident, and your car destroyed this beer. What do you think? What will happen? If one beer of these beers is destroyed for a car accident or some reason, what do you think about this part of the beam and this part of the beam? We will expect catastrophic failure. Does that make sense? But uh, if your beam is one unit, one unit, supported by this beer and this beer and this beer. For any reason, this beer is removed for a car accident or anything. I think we still have a chance that this beam is still alive. Does that make sense? May survive, may. But this one, sure, we will expect catastrophic failure. Does that make sense? So we prefer indeterminate structure in your house if one column is removed if you are playing with your brother or your uh, kids or anything and you removed one column the floor i think still survive that makes sense so looks like student jennifer miguel marcos said determined structure okay I told you indeterminate structure has advantage. Less stress, less cost, not expensive, uh, greater stiffness, less deflection. And if something happened to the beer or the column, we will not expect catastrophic failure. Probably the structure will survive. So it looks like indeterminate structure is good. The question is why we need to construct determined structure. Okay, I know determined indeterminate structure has advantage. However, we have disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? Two points which are critical. And they are the main reason why we construct our bridge to be determined. These two points are very critical, especially for bridges. Let me explain the first one. Settlement. Settlement. Yes. Uh, I don't like to go through this one, but I will explain it quickly. 
Guys, uh, this beer of the bridge is supported here by footing and this footing on the ground soil. This soil has water table and soil particle. For any reason, the water table is the water table level is decreased for any reason due to the applied load we can expect compaction in the soil this compaction means the soil level will de uh, will decrease so the footing will go down the beam or the beer i'm sorry the column or the beer will go down so this level will go down this is called settlement so if you have determinate structure and the this beer is going down a little bit which called settlement in the soil nothing will happen this beam remain straight line and this beam remain straight line because both of them are separated previously for example another example if this beer is still alone and still uh, the same and this one the same but this beer go uh, went down by settlement so if this one go down nothing will happen this beam is still straight line and this one still straight line no change in the stresses nothing will happen the beam still in a good condition no deformation no broken no stresses no internal forces however However, this beam is one unit. If the intermediate beer would like to go down, so this beer is connected to this beam, so the beer will grab this beam down. We expect deformation. If you have deformation in the beam curvature, we have bending moment. We have stress. We have cracks. Probably we have failure. That makes sense. So in the case of settlement of the soil, we prefer determined structure. Because if the settlement happen to any of the beers, nothing will happen to the structure. No bending moment, no stresses, no cracks. That makes sense. Does that make sense? But if your structure is indeterminate and one beer go down for the settlement of the soil, uh, we expect additional bending moment, additional uh, stresses, additional crack, and probably failure in the structure. So, because the bridge is going from uh, probably one area of the city to another far away area we have different type of soil in between we can expect a settlement here we can expect settlement here or here or here or here so we can expect settlement in the bridge so the be the reason for this we will make this bridge to be determined for any reason this beer settled down no problem. No collapse will happen because this beam is to, uh, will remain a straight line and the following beam will remain straight line. No additional stress, no additional internal forces. Any question so far? Any question? I will give you a conclusion by the end. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Guys, uh, do you like to make your beam like this? 
or like this. I have a good question. The difference between the first case we have hinge and roller. The second case we have hinge and hinge. Any question? Uh, I'm sorry, any answer? Uh, do you like case number one or case number two? What do you think? What do you think? Case number one or number two? Okay, if you said case number one, why? If you said case number two, why? By the way, case number one is determined. Case number two is indeterminate because we have two reaction here and the two reaction there. So we have four unknowns. This one has three reactions. We have three unknowns. So case number one is indeterminate. What you mean by it allows movement? I know the settlement will not happen here. So what do you mean by movement? Okay, your answer, Miguel, is correct. And your answer, Marcus, is correct. But what do you think about movement? Guys, uh, do you know uh, during the summer in Texas uh, or winter in New York or Illinois, or Colorado, uh, we expect big change in temperature. That's right. For in Texas, the temperature can uh, go up for 90, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too hot. During the day, the bridge still under the sun effect for probably 12 hours or 10 hours. So if you have increase in temperature during the course in strength of material or mechanics of material, we learn it. We can expect elongation equal alpha delta T L. So the bridge length will increase due to temperature. I know the bridge is made of concrete, even concrete or steel, whatever the material, we should expect elongation. If you have roller on one side and you have hinge on the other side, the hinge will not move, but the roller can move. So the expansion of the lens is allowed, which is good, which is good. We should allow for this expansion. Because if you prevent this elongation, can you expect? This one would like to expand, but you are preventing from the two points. So we will expect stresses. That makes sense? So we prefer to make our structure to be determined. To be determined to avoid the effect of temperature. So we have two parameters which are very important. Effect of temperature and effect of settlement. These two parameters will make your structure to be determined. Determined. If you don't have issue with settlement, and you don't have issue with temperature, go ahead and make your structure to be indeterminate. That makes sense? So this is the reason, because we have big issues. We have big issues, significant issues, with settlement and the temperature for bridge. Because the bridge all the day under the effect of the sun. And the bridge is bathing through different type of soil because the bridge is very, very, very long. We have big issue 
with settlement and the temperature. This is the reason why we are making these bridges to be determined. But in your house, your house, we don't have issue with temperature. Your house is made of from what? And we don't have issue with settlement. So your house is in determined structure. So keep in your mind, please keep in your mind and put this point in your mind forever. If you have issue with settlement or temperature or both of them, keep your structure determined to avoid the effect of temperature and settlement. If you have settlement, no effect. If your structure is determined. If you have change in temperature, no effect. If your structure is determined. If your structure is indeterminate, we have significant effect due to settlement and the significant effect due to change in temperature. Does that make sense? Anybody has any question? Guys, any question? Thank you. Thermal expansion and the contraction effect of temperature. I believe during your strengths of uh, mechanics of material, I think last year, if you have piece of material, concrete, steel, wood, whatever, plastic, and you have a change in temperature, increase in temperature, you should expect elongation equal alpha delta T L. If this is a drop in temperature, you should expect contraction in this part alpha delta T L. So sometimes it's elongation, Sometimes it's contraction due to the effect of temperature. You cannot uh, 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 imagine during the summer in Texas, in Dallas, for example, can you stand under the effect of the sun for 12 hours? No way. Your structure will expand, believe me. So you must make your structure to be determined. If you have issue with temperature, anyway, anyway, okay, uh, let's start with uh, our method to solve indeterminate structure. We have indeterminate structure, and we need to solve it. I told you we have many methods. One of them called moment distribution method the moment distribution method is a structural analysis method for statically indeterminate structure moment distribution method is based on the principle of successively locking and unlocking locking and unlocking the joints of a structure in order to allow the move the moment at the joint to be distributed and balanced the best way to explain the method is by example that makes sense. So forget what I said, but before starting any example, I would like to highlight something. We have something called the stiffness factor. This factor is indication of the strong or weak of a member. This factor equal for EI divide L. For EI divide L. So to make your beam strong, we need this factor to be greater to increase this factor. So if you have a beam like this, I'm, I'm talking about general information for you as engineer. 
So please pay attention. I'm talking about general information. We have a beam. What are the different parameters can make this beam stronger? We have three parameters. E, I, L. Because we need this factor to be greater as much as we can. If you can make this factor greater or larger, we can make this beam stronger. Because this factor, 4 EI divide L, called stiffness factor. So E related to material for steel, for concrete, for wood, for aluminium, for brick, we have different value of E. The, the greatest value for steel, 29,000 KSR. For concrete, 2,900 KSR only. For wood, I think it's, it's a smaller and a smaller and a smaller. So if you would like to make this beam stronger, you have option to change the material of the beam. You can choose a stronger material. I, which is moment of inertia from engineering mechanics, you learn it. I for this cross section, P H cube divide 12. Moment of inertia. So if you would like to make this beam stronger, please, you can make this term I bigger. How can I make this term bigger? Okay, go ahead and change the dimension of this cross section B and H. If you increase H, H will be to power three. So it will make a big difference for I. If you would like to make this beam stronger, go ahead and decrease the beam length. Because if this one is decreased, Remember, L in the dominator. If you decrease the dominator, this factor will increase. So keep in your mind, we have a factor called stiffness factor equal 4 EI divide L. We have three parameters in this factor, which is the material of the beam, the inertia of the beam, and the length of the beam. We would like to make your beam stronger. We would like to make the nominator bigger and bigger. And the dominator smaller and smaller. Because we need this factor as a whole value bigger and bigger. That makes sense? That makes sense? Any question regarding this point? This information are general information. You have to keep it in your mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have something called distribution factor because this method is called moment distribution. Looks like we will distribute something. If you would like to distribute something, we need factor of distribution. For example, for example, if we have a chicken, anybody is hungry? Are you hungry? How many students we have? We have five students. So, how can we divide this chicken among these five students? I will not uh, distribute it equally. I will say based on your score on exam number two, I will give you a part of this chicken. So how can I divide this chicken? Okay, I can do it. Your score 
in the exam, divide submission of all the scores of all the student, I can give you distribution factor. This is your part. Does that make sense? Distribution factor. Guys, if we have a whole chicken and we would like uh, to uh, divide it or distribute it among the five students in this class right now, we have Benjamin, Jennifer, Marcos, Miguel, Zach. So based on your score in the exam number two, I will give you a part of this check. So how can I do this? Okay, go ahead. Your score divides submission of all the scores for the five students can give you the distribution factor, your part. Does that make sense? Does that make sense for this point? So, this factor is the stiffness factor, indication of the strength of the member. Based on this factor, I can make distribution of the moment. Each, each member will get a part of the moment based on its strengths. If the member is strong enough, we'll get more moment. If the member is weak, we'll get less moment. So your distribution factor equal the stiffness factor of this member, divide summation of all stiffness factor for the other members. Does that make sense? We will we will explain that this in more details during the example. One more thing, uh, guys. Do you remember um, if you have a beam, hinge, and the roller, and you have distributed load? Do you remember what was the bending moment? The bending moment looks like parabola. And this value of the moment, W L square, divide it. Do you remember that? Uh, we have the same situation here, but your beam is fixed from this side and fixed from the other side. So what is the value of the moment at this fixed support and this fixed support, which you call fixed? end moment each member is assumed fixed fixed what is the moment at this fixed support and the moment at this fixed support you these cases must be in your mind you don't need to remember all, uh, them all the time, but you can open your node during the exam. If you have concentrated loot, your fixed end moment equal P A square P A B divide L square. The moment on the other side P B square A divide L square. If you have uniform distributed loot, WL squared divide 12. WL squared divide 12. If you have two concentrated load at the middle third, 2PL divide 9. If you have triangle, right angle triangle like this, at this point, WL squared divide 30. At this part or this side, WL squared divide 20. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? For example, for example, we have beam, I assume that it fixed, fixed, and we have uniform distributed load equal 30 kib per foot and the length equal 10 feet. Okay, your moment based on this case, WL squared divide 12 and the WL squared divide 12. Okay, go ahead and put your number W 30. 
L square 10 square divide 12. Your value will be. Thirty times two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. That makes sense. If your bending moment diagram counterclockwise will be positive, clockwise will be negative. I forget to add the sign convention. Counterclockwise will be positive. Clockwise will be negative. So this sign will be ne uh, negative. This one will be positive. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. One more example. If we have beam fixed, fixed, with concentrated load here 10 kip and these lenses are 5 feet 8 feet it's very easy very easy please we are in this case this value of the load is b this side of the lens will a will be a and this one will be b so A equal 8, B equal 5. So your moment at this side will be P, A square, B divide L square. Okay, go ahead and put your number. P is 10. A square, 8 square. B is 5. Divide L square, the total length at 13. Square. Go ahead and find your number. For this one, we will have based on this formula P uh, B square A divide L square. P is 10. B, uh, B square 5 square time A, which is 8. Divide L square 13 square. Find your number. Remember, this direction is positive. I'm sorry. This direction is negative. It's counterclockwise. And this direction is positive. Does that make sense? So, part of the steps, we need to assume each member to be fixed, fixed, and to find the fixed end moment. Any question? I have question. And I, I have question. And you have to, to, to expect this question in your exam. Guys, uh, if you have uh, member Fix it, fix it. And the applied load looks like this. This value is 4 k per foot. This value is 6 k per foot. And this length equal 10 feet. What is the value of the fixed end moment here? And what is the value of fixed end moment here? Do you think this shape, which looks like trapezoid, is one of these cases? No. It's not concentrated load like this one, or too concentrated load. Or one right angle triangle or uniform distributed. So, do you think we need to uh, learn one more case? Anybody has any thought about how can we solve this one?
Yeah, good answer, Zach. Uh, Zach, you, 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 I have a big question mark about you. Anyway, um, yes. What do you think if I will make or I will use superposition? What do you mean? I will divide this trapezoid to these two shapes. This shape, which is looks like uniform distributed loot with a value four kib per foot plus another sheep which is this part of the triangle and remember this value this little value will be six minus four will be two. So this one will be WL squared divide 12, WL squared divide 12, and this one will be WL squared divide 30, and this one will be WL squared divide 20, like this one and this one. And remember, the final fixed end moment here will be this value, plus this value. Here will be WL squared divide 12 plus WL squared divide 20. So you can get the final fixed in the moment by superposition. So remember, if your case is not included in these four cases, please try to think. Try to make combination, try to make separation, to ma try to use superposition. Does that make sense? Okay. 